What's up guys, I'm Morley from Yellron Blog, and today I'm going to show you how I made this leather film holster. This was a commission for my friend Tanner, an avid film photographer. He asked me to make him a belt holster to hold a few rolls of film. Since Tanner will be using the film holster while out doing street photography, I designed it to tightly and securely hold the film while still allowing him to easily retrieve and replace a roll with one hand. We decided that the film holster should hold two rolls of 35mm film in canisters and one roll of 120mm film in its foil packaging. I took some measurements of the canisters and cut out strips of 5 to 6 ounce veg tan leather to hold them on the holster. For the backing piece, I used nice, thick, 8 to 9 ounce veg tan leather. I was really careful about only cutting as much as I needed since this is a beautiful side of leather. The loop that holds the 120mm film needs to be pretty flexible, so I cut this piece out of some 1 to 2 ounce leather. The back backing piece is made out of 5 to 6 ounce leather. I cut this piece a bit larger than the front backing piece so that when their edges are aligned, there's some extra space in between for a belt to pass through. This will make a lot more sense once I put all the pieces together. Now, I was ready to dye the leather. I diluted some range tan dye to get the color that Tanner requested and made sure to thoroughly wet all of the pieces before applying the dye. This step is called casing and I've come to realize just how important it is to get a uniform dye job and minimize splotchiness. It essentially opens up the pores of the leather so that the dye is absorbed nice and evenly. You might have noticed that there are two extra little pieces of leather. These are spacers and I'll explain why I need them later on in the video. I applied three coats of dye in multiple directions to try and minimize any streaking. The 8 to 9 ounce leather ended up dyeing a lot darker than the other pieces. I'm not really sure why this was. Maybe the leather has bigger pores, maybe there's a different microscopic texture, but at the end of the day, leather is a natural material and every cow is different. If you know more about this phenomenon, I'd love to hear in the comments. In the end, Tanner liked the two-toned look, so I moved on with the pieces as is. After dyeing, I buffed all the pieces with a soft cloth to remove any excess dye pigment. The dyeing process removes the natural oils from leather, leaving you with a dried out piece. To restore this moisture, I applied a healthy coat of Neat's Foot Oil and left it to absorb for a few hours. Then, I finished the leather with Carnoba Cream. I applied two coats by wiping it on with a soft cloth, allowing to dry and then buffing to a sheen. I love this natural wax finish, and I'll have a link for it in the description. Next, I trim the spacers to their final size. The purpose of these spacers is to move the 35mm film canisters away from the backing piece. This makes sure the caps of the canisters aren't pressed against the backing and are easy to remove and replace. I used contact cement to attach the spacers to the backing. Next, I wrapped the film canisters with the strips of 5 to 6 ounce leather and trim them to length so that the ends don't quite touch when they're tight around the canisters. This gave me room to snug up the wrap with baseball stitching. I finished the edges of these pieces now since it would be really difficult after they were attached to the backing. I started by beveling all of the edges front and back. Thank you. 
I dyed the edges, allowed them to dry, and then moved on to burnishing. Once my edges were smooth and shiny, I rubbed them with beeswax and did one final burnishing pass to melt the beeswax onto the edges. I made sure to punch the baseball stitching holes before attaching the strips to the backing. As I've fallen deeper into the leatherworking rabbit hole, I've learned just how much order of operations can make or break your project. Punching these holes would be super awkward once these strips were attached to the backing. Being a high stress area, this thin strip of contact cement doesn't contribute much strength to holding these pieces together. So I reinforce these joints with a few saddle stitches. The back of the backing piece will rub against a belt, so I made sure to hammer the stitching flush to the leather and protect it with a healthy coat of beeswax. With the strip secure, I was ready to cinch the film canisters into place with baseball stitching. Baseball stitching works wonders at pulling leather tight around a solid object. Each stitch progressively pulls the leather tighter and tighter rather than each individual stitch pulling on its own. So, it's important to backstitch a few times at the end to make sure you don't lose that built-up tension. Backstitching takes up some of that tension, but not all of it. So, I rubbed some beeswax on the thread halfway through tying the final knot so it wouldn't loosen as I locked the knot into place. Now, I was ready to move on to the sling for the roll of 120mm film. As before, I finished the edges before attaching the piece to the backing. I wanted to use a brass snap to hold the film in the sling, which requires a hole. Unfortunately, my hole punch couldn't quite reach the hole location, so I punched it with a diamond chisel and reamed it out with an awl in my Swiss Army knife. You can see here that the post on this snap was too short for the thickness of the leather. To take off some thickness, I compressed the leather around the hole to give the post some relief and skive some thickness off of the back of the backing piece. This gave me just enough of the post sticking out to form a flare when I hammered it and hold the snap in place. On the male side of the snap, I had the opposite problem. This time, the post was too long for the thin leather. But this one was an easy fix. I basically made a leather washer to take up some of the post length between the pieces. Next, I beveled and dyed the vertical edges of the backing piece.
While this dye was drying, I reinforced the connection between the thin leather strip and the backing with a couple lines of saddle stitching. I got a great tip recently from my friend Mike at A Word in the Woods. Whenever you can, it's important to stitch parallel to the direction of force. The stitching holes create a line of weakness in the leather, so stitching perpendicular to the direction of pulling creates a weak spot where the leather can break. Since this thin strip will be loaded and unloaded often, it's important that this joint be as strong as possible. Now that the dye was dry, I was ready to burnish the vertical edges of the backing. At this point, I decided to remove some height from the holster. I had initially cut the pieces oversized, and there was no good reason for the backing to extend very far below the 120mm film. I'm glad I made this adjustment. I think it made the holster a little more complete and professional looking. Next, I finished the vertical edges of the back backing piece before attaching it to the front backing piece. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I made the back backing a little taller than the front backing. Since these are attached at their top and bottom edges, this allows me to slightly bend the back backing and create space so that you can easily thread the holster onto a belt. Before dyeing and beveling these edges, I flushed them up with some 120 grit sandpaper. To create a guideline for the stitching, I used the back of a butter knife against a steel ruler. I do have an edge groover, but I've lost the little spoon attachment that creates a groove without cutting into the leather. This method works totally fine for relatively short lines of stitching, so I'll probably keep putting off buying a new spoon attachment. After saddle stitching, the only thing left to do was create a couple more beautiful smooth edges, and this baby was ready to be sent off to Tanner. I love making custom functional pieces like this film holster. It's incredibly satisfying to create an accessory that interacts perfectly with an existing item, and it's incredibly rewarding to make it for someone else. Tanner told me that he's really happy with the film holster, and from my end, it looks like an awesome addition to his already kick-ass photography rig. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out the rest of my channel. I have videos about making all sorts of stuff. If you'd like to directly support my work, check out the links in the description. And as always, have a great day.